The EHF Cup Party is back with a bang. Stay tuned for some nail-biting handball action. After a demanding victory against Silkeborg in the last round, Benfica wanted to confirm their good form against Melzungen. Ten minutes into the game, the host made it a two-goal lead, and with a strong Georgic, who was six from six from the court, the lead grew to five goals after 30 minutes. Every try from Melzungen to make it back into the game was extinguished by the collective of Benfica. All in all, another great performance and a well-deserved 29-26 victory for the hosts. The second game in Group A seemed to be a pretty clear game for the visitors from Denmark. Especially because of good defensive work, leading to a lot of fast break goals in the first 30 minutes and a high scoring half time of 2012. It was also time to shine for Silkeborg's left winger, Albert Pedersen, with a remarkable performance of 10 goals. But Opola kept fighting and were close to turning this game around, but in the end, it just wasn't enough. A 32 29 victory for Silkeborg. Even though the German visitors were missing important players like Gensheimer, Lagarde and Abutovic, the team led by Swiss handball magician Andy Schmidt managed to control the game against Holsterbro throughout the entire 60 minutes. Last season's EHF Finals participants were stopped by the impressive Michael Apfelgrenen goal and could not handle Andy Schmidt and his handball magic. In the end, a start to finish 35-27 victory for the Leuven. In the second encounter in Group B, the French team Nîmes, led by Egyptian right-winger Mohamed Sana, started the game powerfully and took an early five-goal lead. The home side managed to build up on Sanad's performance and took a four-goal lead at the break. But the Spanish visitors went furiously into the second half and goal by goal managed to catch up with the home side and even take their first lead in the game and build it up to two. Even though Cuenca had the victory in their hands, the home side managed to pull off a comeback and with a goal from Tobi secured a 29-29 draw. The Spanish hosts, led by Manolo Cadenas, were in desperate pursuit of points against the German favourites Magdeburg and things looked good for Leon as they managed to take a two-goal lead at the half. However, a powerful start to the second half capitalised with an 8-2 series within 10 minutes, helping Magdeburg build a four-goal lead. Leon never stopped fighting and managed to reduce the gap to only two. However, Magdeburg's best player of the day, Michael Damgaard, decided the encounter with his ninth goal and secured his team's second victory of the competition. Final score, 31-27. It's David versus Goliath in the matchup between Gorenia Valenia and Nantes. Nantes quickly made clear who was in charge, building up a lead right from the get-go and went into the half of a 19-12 lead. Valero Rivera was a big reason for that due to his six goals. The host never came closer than two goals in the second half, so Nantes cruised to a clear 35-28 victory. The Berlin Foxes proudly presented their fantastic transfer coup. The Latvian giant Dainis Kristofans, who signed a contract until the summer and will be a huge reinforcement for Velomir Petkovic's squad. However, the man in charge of Berlin was not happy at all with his team's performance in the first 30 minutes against Tatabanya. The Hungarians, led by the youngster Uros Borzás, took a three-goal lead in the 25th minute after a five-goal streak. The 20-year-old netted six goals before the break and single-handedly led the guests to a two-goal lead at the half. The second half was a battle of the second-choice goalkeepers. Silvio Heinevetter on one side, putting up a goalkeeping show Heinevetter style, and his younger colleague Adam Borbeli on the other. The 24-year-old Hungarian goalie was a key factor for Tatabanya's success. And with this save against Mandelinic, secured an extremely important point for the visitors. In the end, final score 27-27. Who will get their first points in Group D was the big question before the game, and neither team could answer that question in their favour as the game went tied 15-15 into half-time. And it stayed an extremely competitive one over the span of 60 minutes. 
five minutes before the end, BM Logrono led by four goals, but Pauk showed hard and with a strong Wesley Pardin in goal, fought their way back to draw the game. Final score after an absolute nail-biting game, 29-29. That's a wrap for the second round, and what a round it was. Let's see what the next one has in store for us.